Hey everybody, welcome to another review. Um, today I'm going to be looking at the new uh, Bullguard Internet Security Suite. Um, this suite, if I remember right, is based um, on uh, the Bitdefender engine. Um, and it was redesigned the way it looks. So you have uh, your action, quick action buttons here. So you can scan for viruses, uh, allow uh, block programs, inspectors, backup data. It comes with a backup um, data. You get 100 uh, megabytes online total, which is really not that much. Uh, most suites offer at least a couple gigabytes. Um, you can't do anything with 100 megabytes. And um, you got different things. It has a firewall, of course it's got the antivirus, it's got a spam filter, uh, there's a little inspector thing here, uh, it scans for programs, uh, probably if I remember right, I think it scans for um, programs that need updating and that type of thing. Um, it's got a game profile here, and of course the support button. So uh, let me show you here that it is fully updated. We'll check for updates. Okay. And uh, let's just kind of take a quick peek to see, you know, just get a quick rough idea of how uh, much RAM uh, usage we have here. Now when I install this, you do get two options. You get a silent option, or you get an option where it, it's a little bit more for advanced users. Uh, I picked the option that was a little bit for more advanced users. That means they'll ask me some uh, more questions and I wanted to give it as fair of a chance as I could to do as good as it can. So um, right now um, memory wise it's a little heavy actually. Um, you're looking at well, what 60 to 70 megs right around there if you um, include everything. So that's fairly heavy for an internet security suite. Um, especially when in today's world you can get them for 25, 30, even less. So I got some links here, all fairly new. And let's get testing. We'll see how it does. So. A lot of these are real low detection. OK, looks like that one was allowed to do whatever it wanted. Um, it popped up a fake notepad window here, and we'll, it probably did something in the background, but I didn't get anything from uh, Bulldog. The one trend I have been noticing is that uh, more and more companies are going. Um, now this one was blocked. And I got a pop-up here that it blocked an infected uh, file. That was that one right there. And it also looks like it blocked this uh, website. But I will continue to it just to see. OK, so the website's not valid. Like I was saying, uh, more and more security companies are going to um, software and they're trending into um, setups where they're not relying on signatures as much as they used to be. The world's just going to have to go away slowly but surely um, from uh, signatures, which are still, you know, useful in their own sense. Um, but there's so much malware coming out that you, they can't keep up. So I'm seeing a lot and a lot of software doing things like sandboxing um, and um, cloud and that type of stuff. Okay, this is a suspicious file. If we click more details here, this is a um, this is that hotfix which is a fake AV. We will quarantine it. Okay, that one's not working. 
Okay, that one was blocked, but we will continue. And it's not working. Looks like I'm going to have to get some more links here. This is a screensaver, if I remember right. Um, just like, you know, um, it was in the news recently that uh, Webroot just bought uh, Prevex, uh, mainly because um, they're noticing that, looks like it caught that one, that they need help in um, developing technologies to stop threats because they can't just nobody can keep up with as many signatures as they are and to this day manufacturers of AV um, components don't share their signatures or at least their samples between each other it's all about who's better than who trying to make money and instead of differentiating themselves between each other through the services they provide to the user they're actually differentiating themselves between um, by one you know let's say a company gets sample A and um, another company doesn't get sample A well company the first company who got the sample won't share it as much as um, they should and because of that company B won't have the signature for it and that type of stuff is just annoying in my opinion I really for the longest time I, I thought it'd be best if somebody would open up a uh, uh, how could you call it not a malware sharing thing but let's say a big clearing house of, of malware for companies where they would uh, all input malware that they would get and they would uh, let's see here this one wants access to the internet so I'll just uh, allow that for now and we'll see what happens this is some kind of Asian something or other and then they could all input the, sign the malware that they get and they're all allowed to download the malware off of the database and that right there would help a lot of companies and that you know they would have to pay into it of course and that type of thing but that would help everybody get samples of malware over you know a long period of time it, everybody's detection ratio would, would go up because you know as much as they say it's all about protecting the user and all that stuff it, it's not it's all about making as much money as they can um, and if it was protecting if it was all about protecting the user they would do that type of stuff they would share malware or you know all sorts of different things between each other and then the different you know they could say well company B uh, might have a good detection ratio but we're giving you this extra in our package you know we're giving you a better firewall we're giving you um, more online storage we're giving you better tech support that type of stuff I think that's where it should be and as at this point in time there's no um, there's nothing regulating these companies from doing what they want to do everything in our life right now is run by computers and there's no regulation on safety for computers you know there's no minimum standards that uh, an antivirus or you know a security solution for a computer should meet and as much as people don't like to say that these uh, these companies don't regulate themselves you know it's it's a thing of you know we want to protect the user but we want to make as much money as we possibly can on the back end too and I kinda of see that as a problem I really think that maybe the you know our world is dependent so much on computers and there's so much money being stolen right now that um, I really think that maybe there should be a global organization that okay so it looks like it submitted that file that would set minimum standards you know like when when you go to buy a car right um, there's minimum safety standards for the car you know there's braking stand I mean there's every kind of standards when you buy a car when you buy furniture there's standards for everything around if you look around you everything has some kind of organization usually government run or government you know sponsored where they go okay you buy 
you go and you buy a, an electrical cord. It's listed by, you know, the underwriter's laboratory has tested it. And has said that this, you know, cord can withstand this much heat, uh, that many, you know, whatnot, uh, that many amps, that many volts for this long a period of time. It won't catch on fire. It won't, you know, all these things, you know, there's no lead in it, that type of stuff. Well, these types of standards don't exist in the software world. And I personally think that... Uh, something should be brought up where um, now this, we're gonna do a full system scan here and um, like I said I think something should be should be made where there's minimum standards for security in today's world to make sure that users are protected but we'll see what happens anyway that was my little spiel on uh, security and uh, right now I'm going to let this uh, scan and I will be back when the scan is done. All right, so uh, Bullguard finished scanning here, and uh, it found three things, and these are in uh, temporary internet files. So, and this is what it does first: it tries to disinfect, and then it quarantines as the last step. And then there's that one, and it found some cookies, and it skipped 46 files, which are all you know locked Windows files, that type of stuff that they can't. Uh, scan. So we're going to fix all these and uh, we'll finish and now I'm going to restart and I'm going to bring in my scanning tools and I'll do CCleaner first to get rid of everything, temporary files and stuff like that and then after I do CCleaner I'm going to do a scan with Malwarebytes so I'll be back with the results from Malwarebytes. Okay guys I'm back. Um, Malwarebytes just finished scanning and it found 13 things. Let's see what it found here. Looks like it's all associated with one um, rogue here. Safety bone. Um, and uh, let's see what we have here. We have some uh, file here, program files, uh, a couple of registry keys, and the folder. Now let's see if it's it hasn't registered itself inside the, uh, the startup menu here. So well, I'm going to remove this thing. That's really not that bad. It's all, I count it as one big infection, but it's it's just the rogue to start out with anyway. And uh, now I'm going to do a scan with Hitman Pro. And I will be back when this is done. Wait, what just happened? Hmm, okay. I'll be back. I'll, I'm going to have to restart and uh, try Hitman Pro again. See you in a second. Okay, so um, I had to restart, and I think it was because I accidentally clicked uh, restart, and that's fine for Malwarebytes. And um, restarted Hitman Pro, finished scanning. It didn't find anything. And I have some extra time, so I'm going to do a uh, Super Anti Spyware scan while I'm at it. Um, I have to see if this is the newest portable version or if I have to go grab another one. So <clears throat> I'll be right back with the results from Super Anti Spyware. Okay. So <clears throat> Super Anti Spyware finished scanning here and it didn't find anything. So that's not bad. Um seems that uh Volgard from my last test has improved and uh those samples were really um fairly new and low detection. So it looks like they gotten a little better. I uh, hope that uh, as time goes on, they get better and better. I just hope that they do a little bit more work on the RAM usage. It doesn't seem to slow down the system too much. So that's not bad. Um, so it looks like they're, you know, they're heading on their way of um, slowly improving their product. And uh, I like to see that. I always like to see products that are slowly improving. I, at this point in time, would probably say... Um, Bullguard, you know, if if you want to use it, it it probably would uh, serve you fairly well. Other than the high uh, memory usage, it doesn't seem too bad. I'd probably give it a six or seven out of ten. There's some improvements here and there that they can make, but that's not bad. So um, that's it for this review. I got one more to do on another product, and uh, I'll talk to everybody later. Take care.